All right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. There's nothing crucial right at the beginning that anyone that joins late will miss. Um, so I'm Erica Schneider. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm the Greenway Program Associate for Parks and Trails New York, and I'm joined by my colleague Dylan Carey. <laughs> Says hello. <laughs> And so I manage a lot of the programs along the long distance trails in New York, including the Canalway Trail, which you all are here for today. And um, just a heads up, we have kind of two different groups of people on the call today. We have um, some folks from our newest trail towns, Lockport, Newark, and Rome, that are volunteering to count trail users for the first time. Yeah. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> And um, we also have some folks from our trail adopter and ambassador program. And you guys might know a little bit more about uh, counting trail use, but um, we're here to give a refresher and update you on a couple of the things we've changed since last year, if you have counted before. So some of the examples I might give today are going to be more tailored toward the trail towns, but just know that everything I talk about will be just as applicable to anywhere else on the trail. And we're so excited to have as many manual counts across the corridor as we can get. So once again, thank you for joining us. And if you can't be here, uh, or if you know of anyone that wasn't able to be here in person, um, or virtually online, we are recording this webinar, so it will be available to share around. Next slide, please, Dylan. So um, today we're going to be doing some introductions. I'll start with a little bit about PTNY and then turn it over to you all so we can get a feel for who's on the call. Going to go through the history of our count program, just give you a little bit of background, why we count trail use, and then we'll get into the meat of the program, the counting trail use, the when, where, how, how it all goes down so we can get consistent, accurate data. Then I'll open the floor up to questions. Next slide. So before I really get started, here's a quick overview of Parks and Trails New York. I know most of you are familiar with our work, but um, if you need a little bit of a refresher, we're a statewide nonprofit uh, that has advocated on behalf of our state park system and in favor of an interconnected network of high quality multi-use trails. We call them greenways uh, for more than 35 years. So we've been working on the Erie Canalway Trail specifically since 1995 in partnership with the New York State Canal Corporation. Um, we're able to do this trail count work as a result of funding from the Canal Corp. And um, we're, a lot of our programs are aimed at ensuring that the trail system is an asset to the nearby canal communities and is a destination for bicyclists from around the world. So now I want to um, turn it over to you guys, do a couple more introductions. Um, you know me and my colleague Dylan, but just so I know who's on the call, I'll just call on people. Um, and if you could introduce yourself with your name, the community you live in, and whether you've done a trail count before or not, and um, whether you're a part of one of our volunteer programs. So I'll start with uh, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave from the uh, Rome Trail Town Steering Committee. Uh, what else you need to know, I think? Is that it? <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> That's great. Uh, I, no, I, I, have, I have a, I, no, I have not, other than writing along counting people as they go by. So, yeah. no, I have not. Thanks. All right. That's great. Thanks for joining us. Bobby? I am also a part of Rome and on the steering committee on behalf of the Rome Rotary Club and looking forward to learning all we can and getting my bicycle out on the trails again. That's great. Thanks for joining. Michelle? Hey, I'm Michelle Ryder. Um, I work at Fort Stanwix National Monument in Rome, New York, and we do a lot of counting of visitors at our, our park, but we don't necessarily break it down into how many people are using bicycles and how many people have strollers or whatnot. So I'm interested to see how, how, how y'all do it and how we can help. Awesome. Thank you. Gloria? Hi, I'm Gloria Gusky. Um, I'm from Brackport, New York. Uh, we've just adapted a portion of the trail. I've never done a account before. Great, thank you for joining us. Nice to, nice to see you again. Hi. Ian? Yeah, um, I live in Rome. I have not done a count before and I'm just 
interested in promoting bicycle safety. Awesome. Great to have you. Mary Ellen? I'm Mary Ellen Liss. I'm in the Rochester, New York area. Um, and my husband and I adopted a two mile stretch of the canal um, uh, in 2020. And this will be my third count we, we've done it the past couple of years. So, yeah, we love it. We love the canal. So, yeah. pardon my voice. I have a laryngitis. So. Oh, no. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And we're so grateful for your uh, the counts you've done the last couple of years. They've provided us with some really great data to work with in areas where we haven't had counters. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Kevin? Hey, good afternoon, folks. I'm Kevin Wyrick, the, uh, the superintendent of Fort Stanwix National Monument and on the Rome Steering Committee. I'm actually on the road traveling back from North Carolina to New York. So I got your audio here. I don't have video, but uh, so glad to be a part of this and do all we can to help out Empire State Trails and all of our partners, uh, Rome and Erie Canal Way. Uh, very exciting time to be in Rome uh, and looking forward to uh, getting our trail town designation, hopefully uh, later on this year. Yeah, that's great. And you're coming in crystal clear. So thanks for joining us. Um, and, and thanks for tuning in. Yes, ma'am. Great. And then I'm excited to um, also share with you that Shelby Moore, the um, trail maintenance manager with the New York State Canal Corporation is with us today as well. Shelby. Hi, everybody. Um, glad to be here. It sounds good to hear everybody's excitement, and I'm glad that everybody's a good advocate for the canals. Uh, it's also my first time listening in on this. I am new to canals. I've been here uh, just under a year, so still learning the process as we go, but this will be a good opportunity for me to learn as well. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Shelby. <clears throat> Great to have you. So um, now I think we're going to move on. Thank you all for uh, joining. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the trail counts that we've done on the Canalway Trail. So since 2005, as part of our partnership with the New York State Canal Corporation, we've conducted trail counts at many locations across the state. In 2010, we started using a nationwide count methodology developed by the National Bicycle and Pedestrian Demonstration Project, which has provided the underpinnings for all of our trail count work today and is still what we use today. Um, and then since 2014, we've used electronic counters to count trail use for a full year at a specific location. These counters run continuously once installed and give us a broader picture of trail use at the points at which they're installed. However, we only have a limited number of these and uh, they don't capture the mode like whether people are biking or walking or like strollers or skating. So that's where you all come in um, as the manual counters to help augment that data. And um, moving on to the next slide, please. So what do these reports include? They have a summary and an analysis of the places at which uh, we conducted trail counts over the past year, including an estimate of the total annual use at each site, um, either the actual counted use if we had data for the entire year or an estimated figure based on that methodology by the Bicycle and Pedestrian Demonstration Project or um, NBPD for short. And uh, now we have enough data from across the corridor that we can include an estimate of the total use of the entire trail. So um, using the last five years of data and our last Who's on the Trail report from 2022, we were able to say that the Canalway Trail System sees over 3.5 million visits a year, almost 3.4 million of which were along just the Erie Canalway Trail. And if you're interested, the extrapolation methodology is a little bit wonky, but um, Dylan or I would be happy to talk more about that at the end of this webinar um, if you want to know more about how that works. So next slide, please. In the last couple of years, we've ramped up our efforts to encourage manual trail accounts again to gain that deeper understanding of how people are using the trail. And uh, thank you to everyone that has done this in the past. So up on the slide, I have a sample page from one of these counts that took place in Syracuse. And we were able to calculate an estimated annual use from the manual counts that they did, as well as a breakdown of how people were using the trail at this location. And you'll see that a large percentage of the folks here were using, um, were pedestrians as opposed to cyclists. 
And it's be partly uh, because the trail here is on road for cyclists and sidewalk for pedestrians. So you get those kind of different breakdowns based on where what what type of trail um, you're working with. Sometimes it'll be different whether it's stone dust or paved, or in this case, whether it's um, roadway and sidewalk versus a separated multi-use trail. Next slide. So why, why do we count trail use? Why is this so important um, that you guys are here? Well, one of the things is funding for agencies seeking grant funding for trail projects, demonstrating the level of potential use. It's one of the critical pieces of information needed to make the case for a project. I think that's um, pretty self-explanatory and is often required for grant applications. So this is really great data for communities across the corridor to have on hand. It also demonstrates the value of trails. Assessing the value of trails is critical for ensuring that local public officials continue to steer public investment into the construction, operations, and maintenance of the trails. So where data has been collected, it has demonstrated the popularity of these trails as a community resource. And used more broadly, these trail counts are an important way to generate support for trails from elected officials, transportation professionals, economic development and public health interests, and the general public. Just shows that, you know, you have your... Um, your idea of how many people are using the trail, but this lets you show that yes, this is a valuable community asset. Um, trail count data also helps track performance. So it can help you establish baseline trail usage levels, uh, demonstrating changes in usage patterns over time and enabling jurisdictions to evaluate the effectiveness of their trail investments. So if you look at if you're able to count trail use before you um, create a critical connection, for example, you can then look a couple of years in the future after that connection has been a pla in place and show um, what impact that had to help advocate for future investments like that. Then, of course, prioritizing projects. Local and regional bicycle and pedestrian plans rely on many factors to prioritize projects for implementation. And historically, there has been a lack of bicycle and pedestrian data as compared to vehicular data. So having this helps fill in those gaps and um, proves that, uh, or helps raise projects, bike and pedestrian projects to the top uh, for more investment. All right, so, that kind of sums up the, the what's been going on up until now and uh, the why, but now I'm going to get into the actual procedure. So um, as you can see, this is a image of a typical count, although we recommend that you bring a lawn chair <laughs> and set up a little, little camp for yourself um, because you will be sitting out there for an extended period of time and your legs will get tired. But um, I'm just going to go through some of the, the key aspects of the COUNT program one by one. Next slide. So the first thing you need to decide, or one of the first things, is um, when COUNT should be conducted. So um, these are the rules. For each site, you need to count at least two weekdays and two weekend days. Weekdays are defined as Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday not Monday or Friday, and weekend days are defined as Saturday or Sunday. And you need to do this, um, conduct at the same time on the same days for each location two weeks in a row. So as you can see on the sample calendar, you would count Tuesday um, at 5 to 7 p.m., I think that's what I said, and then Saturday uh, from 1 to 3, and then the next week at the exact same times on those same days. So this is really important for us to um, be able to legitimately extrapolate from this data. I know it may seem uh, very strict, but this helps us be able to um, have faith in those calculations that we make. And so the times, you can select the times, it doesn't have to be from five to seven or one to three. Those times are just um, when you think the trail is busiest. So, Often on weekdays, that is in the evenings, and on weekends, that's in the middle of the day, but use your best judgment for, you guys know your uh, sections of trail better than we do, so um, that can help inform when, when you select to count. 
And I will also say that you personally don't need to do every single count. If you have someone kind of um, organizing this on a wider scale, uh, trail towns, we can talk about who might be the best fit for doing that. But um, you can have someone, you can have different people fill in each slot as long as um, each slot is getting filled. Do you guys if have I, any questions? Yeah. If I can just add one quick thing, uh, a piece of detail that I, I should have told you about. But um, okay. for those two hour blocks, we do ask that they start at the top of an hour. Yes. It's a lot, makes it a lot more complicated for us to have to calculate the extrapolation aspect of it. If it's starting at like 345 and going to, to you know, 545, three to five just is a much better, more functional block of time for us to use. So we do ask that the, those count blocks do run from the top of an hour uh, to, to for a two hour stretch. That's right. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. And one last thing is that these counts should be conducted in the summer. That's where we're at right now. So any time from now until Labor Day is, um, is when we would expect the counts to be conducted. Any questions before I move on? I know this is maybe confusing. Yeah, Dave? Was it three, th I, Dave him in here. Was it three weeks in a row you needed it? Just two. Two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any two weeks in the summer? Yep. I believe you said they do need to be consecutive, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you will you be sending this uh, slide deck yes. to us? Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. We'll send all this as follow up. And we also have a condensed um, trail count procedures. Um, handout so that will be sent as well so you'll have all this information on one piece of paper one clarifying thing though on that um uh any week in the, the summer if a tuesday wednesday or thursday is a holiday that should not be one of the weeks because holiday use will skew the numbers so as long as it's i, I haven't looked at the calendar but i think the fourth might be on a tuesday wednesday or thursday this year so Avoiding uh, that week is one of the two weeks. How about if if a Monday or a Friday is a holiday? Because you're skipping the Monday. Um, so would the day after the holiday become like a Monday? I think it's fine to still do it that day. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree. Good, good question, though. Yeah. All right. So... Yeah, Dave. I get one more. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So I, I'm going to assume where it's going is that we form a group of counters. We pick two weeks away from holidays mm -hmm. and two days. Let's see, two day, two week, no, one weekday, at least one weekday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. And one weekend day or two weekend days? One weekend day, a Saturday or a Sunday? Mm -hmm. And you count it's those days only. Two weekend days, right? Yeah. A weekday and a weekend day, one week. And then the following right. consecutive week, that same weekday and that same weekend same. day. Okay, yeah. So either, sat either Saturday or Sunday. Doesn't yes. have to be both. Okay. Right. right. But if you do a Saturday, then you have to do the Saturday the following week. And if you do a Sunday, you have to do the Sunday the following week. As long as it's Got the it. same day. Okay. Yep. It's all in all, it's eight hours. Yes. yes. So it's not as big a project as I thought it was sounding to be. Okay. <laughs> it can be as big a project as you want it to be because you can always count at multiple sites or the more counts you do at any one site, the better the data will be, the more reliable it will be. This is the bare minimum to make it usable data, okay. but more data is always better. So so for instance, in Rome, you might do the, the Stanwix Park area. You might do the West End. Yeah, by the sports mm -hmm. museum, and then maybe something in the middle. Mm -hmm. And for each of those individual locations, you would need to follow this two weeks protocol. Yeah, 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 got that. Okay. Oh, and and one last piece of clarifying: this may be a, an unnecessary confusion thing, but it doesn't need to be a weekend after a weekday. It could be Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Yeah. Um, okay. That. Good point. But the, it yeah. just needs to be in two consecutive weeks. Okay. And how about doing so, but 
you couldn't do like a Saturday, Saturday, Tuesday, Tuesday. So that you, let's say in, in the calendar you have here, you couldn't do the 4th and the 11th and the 21st and the 28th. Correct. Okay. We'd want them to be the same, like within a week of each other. Yep. Each, Got it. each group. Yep. All right. And if anything else comes up about the dates and times, um, we can still answer that. But I am going to move on to the next um, slide, which is choosing the location. So um, I'm going to talk about two separate kind of types of count locations. One will be the most general and most applicable, which is the counting trail use at a new location, at a location of your choosing. So um, this will be the parameters for this is you're going to want to choose a site about 20 to 50 feet away from a trailhead. So you catch the most people, but you're not being distracted by um, movement from um, around the trailhead. You're going to want to avoid parks or other high traffic areas where people might be using the trail for a reason other than um, other than just being on the trail. Like um, I'm thinking of our trail tents have a couple uh, couple parks that people might be having picnics or might just be milling about reading the historical signs, but you might have them kind of skewing the data by going back and forth a lot. So you want just a stretch of um, Greenway Trail close enough to a trailhead that you're getting a lot of people. And um, I will also add that you can choose an on-road location like, like the Syracuse example that I gave earlier, where um, you have the stretch of trail goes from a multi-use trail onto a roadway and a sidewalk. That can be valuable information. So when you're thinking about choosing your locations, don't limit it just to where there's an actual trail built. So that's the one type, which is the most uh, common, but then the second type of count will be at will be a verification count at the trail counter. So our three trail towns have count, uh, electronic counters installed, and we're going to need one of the counts that each of the trail towns uh, conducts to be at that counter to make sure that um, the counter is recording what what you're seeing, right? So um, you want to just set up right next to the trail counter, just put up your chair. It doesn't matter how far away you are from a trailhead or anything like that. You're just going to want to uh, set up right next to it. And over the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you where those are. So <laughs> it's not a mystery. But don't block the trail counter when you're doing that, because yes. that'll obviously throw it right off. Yeah. Uh, the one clarification I will add for Erica's point about the on-road locations is you're counting everybody who's using, who's bicycling by on that road or using the sidewalk for any purpose. You're not trying to just judge, oh, that looks like a trail user or that looks like somebody who's using the trail. If the trail is on road, everybody using that stretch of road is using the trail. Just not cars. Just not cars. Not right. the cars. Quick yeah. question for Erica and Dylan. Do mm -hmm. we know if the second counter for Rome is going to arrive in time? you know, to, to be installed uh, at that second location? I'm not sure of its status as of right now, but it should definitely be in place before the end of the summer. Okay. So I would say that there will be time to conduct a count at that counter location. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Because I know the, the one location where the counter is will be perfect for collecting, you know, the, manually what's going mm -hmm. on. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, great question. Um, and I don't believe, I was just going to mention, we have counters also up in Utica, Fort Plain, and Albany, but I don't think we have anyone um, on the call from those, those communities, so we won't worry about doing, um, asking you on the call to do verification counts at those locations. Oh, and Jordan. But do you have do you have people in Utica working with you on countering and and so on, or no? We, we have in the past. No, we don't, Dave. Um, maybe yeah. that's something we can follow up on offline if it's if you might be interested or if you know anybody. Yeah. I might. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Dave, Dave, good money. Yeah. Um, I think you talked to a colleague of mine, Carl. I don't know if he's uh, lives out that way. I don't know if you would 
you could recruit him. I might be able to. <laughs> yeah. to or, or, he, he or Brian he hates or Bannock. Too. <laughs> yeah. Brian okay. or Bannock might be a good one as well in Rome. Mm. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Noting all this down yep. as well. Um, so, so now I'm just going to go through a couple of examples uh, from our trail towns to give you an idea of where uh, some good locations might be. So um, in Lockport, we would we recommend um, a count on the south uh, side or the what's it south yeah the south side of Lockport at that trailhead um, before it goes on road. That would be a good spot where we don't have a counter, so you would just be doing a um, a manual count. And then um, our electronic counter is positioned at. Oh, what road is that? Mill Street. And um, yeah, <laughs> and we'll we'll need a verification count conducted at that location. And do we have anyone from Lockport on the call right now? I know Seth was hoping to join, but looks like he didn't make it. Yeah, I don't uh, think we have Lockport yeah. or Newark. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, luckily we'll have the recording. Rome, you showed up. Rome brought it today. <laughs> Um, but just for another example, a good location for counting in Newark would be, see, be um, kind of down down the trail a bit from the either the trailheads, kind of right along the trail there. And then a verification count would be at um, Harder Canal Park, where we have our electronic counter. And then finally in Rome, uh, we gave the example of the um, the bridge um, at Bellamy Harbor Park as a place that you could count. That's where they're thinking about installing the um, new counter, the second counter that Rome will be getting. Maybe hold off on that for now. You have tons of other great locations in the city, and it looks like you have a lot of uh, great volunteers as well. So I would say just use use the map, use your best judgment, and let us know um, where where you guys would like to see the data because at the end of the day this is this is for you all to be able to um, have this data to use to advocate for yourselves. Right off the bat, do you guys have um, ideas, Rome folks, for where you'd want to uh, have more manual counts? I'd like to see something out on out at the east end at the Stanwix Parkway where it goes in and out. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you try to hook that up and get information from a risk knee because that stretch right. needs needs attention. Yes, so we're, what are we looking to to establish here? Because if, if we do in the Bellamy Harbor Park, you have just guests at the at the Bellamy Park um, who are you know crossing the bridge, fishing from the bridge. Um, but if you want to get more of the people going in and out of Rome. Mm -hmm. I would I would put it further east. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So what what is what is the goal here? Do we want to um, have more park visitors or more? I mean, we're looking for trail. Yeah, um, people using the trail, um, and as I said, I think it it'll it would be for that if that's the goal. Then having it further east would be better. Yes, I agree. I think a, a count at the Eastern Trailhead or anywhere kind of. Um, yeah, it's, it's not on the map here, but um, where, where the road heads off to Oriskany, there's a little park area. Yeah. Yep. That, yeah by the lower landing mm -hmm. uh, down on Martin Street. Yes, I think that's 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 it. Yeah. Yeah. The little monument is right there. And, no, and yeah, that would be a good spot. There's a bench there as well. Mm -hmm. um that's um a little piece of land that's uh, well i think it's seven acres uh, that the uh historical society owns so that would be a good yeah. spot right there yeah. yes yeah, or, or even further um there's further that little park, parking area um when after you go under the bridge and head uh what is it left there there's that parking area and then you have that long stretch of trail that that goes mm -hmm. goes along the canal mm -hmm. Yep. There's, a, there's, a, there's a canal trail sign there, mm -hmm. there's parking there, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so on, and, it, and so, it's all paved. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't want to 
derail this, but there's a lot of options in Rome. And I think that's something yeah. that you guys as a trail town committee work out a list of the locations, you know, that yeah. mm -hmm. that's up to you guys at the end of the day is of where you you want to go do the volunteer count and then work out the times at which you can have folks. Cause it's, it's a lot easier to say, yeah, somebody should go count there than to say, <laughs> I, I'm going to go count there. I'm going to go spend <laughs> uh, yeah. my time there. So, you know, make sure that it's something that, that you guys are, are committed to, to doing. Right. I, I think it just needs to be clear what what the who the people are that we're counting. If we're counting people that are coming to Rome and uh, with, along the trail or um, or people who are just kind of using the trail within Rome. Um, they're both they're both great things to count. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I think by capturing the data at all these different locations, at least mm -hmm. three, I would say you'll you'll capture those different user groups. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, are we I blocking out? Are we blocking out? Uh, cycle the Erie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's... Yeah, I would say that would probably be a, a tough. That would day skew to things just a little bit by you know yes. six hundred fifty riders. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We can. <laughs> That's a holiday. That would be good for us. That, that would be good for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're coming. Yeah, what day are they coming through? Yeah. Um, what day is it for Rome? Probably the 13th. I think. Yeah, I was going to say it's usually the 13th. Yeah. It, it's Around 12, then. 13, 14. Yeah. yeah. I want to yeah. set up a lemonade stand. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, so now that we've done like the two main things you got to do is figure out where you're counting and when you're counting and moving on to the next slide. This is uh, the top of the form that you'll fill out while you're counting. And so this top section contains information about who's doing the count, when and where you're counting, what the conditions are on the trail that day and in that stretch. And so your options for trail surface are asphalt, stone dust, natural, and sidewalk uh, slash roadway. And for the weather, just your best judgment for the two, two hour stretch that you were there and uh, approximate temperature, these things all go into the extrapolation methodology and help us uh, create that the most accurate estimate. And um, we also, ask that you take a picture when you're out there. Uh, this helps us be able to verify the information that you told us, but also be able to um, better promote what's happening. So in any of our publications, and we have some good visuals to say like, this is what it was like. You can see um, where they counted. And if you go out with a friend, if you can get somebody to take a picture of you sitting there doing the counting, looking very official, we can use that in next year's presentation rather than the, the slide that Erica had at the beginning. Yes. <laughs> You'll be is, it legal, is it legal to take a time lapse Go, GoPro video? <laughs> oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, Erica, do you want four different pictures? Um, no, that if you if you can take them, then you know we'll use what whatever is best. Um, there is an option on the online form to add a picture for each time you count. Okay, so it, it's easy enough with a smartphone. Might as well. Yeah. Okay. It. Thanks. And we can never have enough photos, good photos of the trail. I mean, Erica and I are both in Albany, and we love getting out to the trail and getting as many photos as we can, but we can only do it so much. So if you guys ever have good photos of the trail that you're willing to share with us that, you know, we can use, always feel free to send those to us. We, we always welcome them. Okay, sounds good. And one last thing before I move on to the actual counting uh, from this more basic information is you'll fill out one of these forms every time you conduct a count. So for each two hour, um, block of time, you'll fill out a new form. As you can see, the date and the time conducted will be specific to that two hour block. All right, so then um, for the actual counting, you'll position yourself alongside the trail. Like I said, probably bring a chair, um, some water, snacks, uh, sunscreen and a hat is always advised. 
and um, you'll face directly at the trail perpendicular to it and draw an imaginary line with your brain <laughs> across the trail. And then you'll have your pencil or pen. And each time uh, someone crosses that imaginary line right in front of you, you'll make a tick mark or a tally um, in the appropriate box. So um, for a tandem bicycle, you will uh, do two ticks because that's two people. For someone pushing a baby carriage or a stroller, make a tick for the walker as well as each passenger in the stroller. You'll see there's a, a box for that. And um, you might notice from last year, we're no longer tracking who is wearing helmets or not. We honestly weren't using that data. Um, so, so we have eliminated it this year to make it simpler for you all. So you can focus on the number of people going by versus getting distracted by, oh, were they wearing a helmet or not? It was like a little bit too much to keep track of. And you'll also see that we added a new box for electric um, or razor scooters. So that style of the electric um, scooter share is really what we're trying to capture here um, because as those get more popular, uh, we're starting to see more conflict of trail users with these this new type of micro mobility. So asking you to mark when you see those as well. And one question we've gotten in the past is whether we track e-bikes or not. And we debated this question. We think it is important, but it is just too difficult to tell these days what is an e-bike and what is not. In many e-bikes, the battery is integrated and you wouldn't even be able to tell as they're flying by. So um, all e-bikes just count as regular bicyclists. We do recognize that it would be good to know, but we just can't, uh, given the way e-bikes look. Not that I and expected to see them in Rome, but what about horses? Which there is a the box for equestrians. Is yes. there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, please mark those if you see them. One piece of clarifying information is or detail as well. You're counting people going in both directions. Uh, if you see the same person come from the right and go past, and then 20 minutes later, come back from the left, count them each time they cross yes. that line. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point, Dylan. Yeah, that we take that all into consideration. We know that people are going to be going out and coming back. That's how trails work most yes. of the time. So definitely count both of those. And I, I do want to clarify, um, and don't want to get into a whole thing about this, but uh, Canal Corporation recently re released a policy on e-bikes, e-scooters, and other uh, things, which I believe uh, prohibits the use of e-scooters e on Canal Corporation-owned stretches of trail. We recognize that's the case. You guys are not law enforcement when you're doing these counts. You're reporting the information to us. It's you know, it, it's not your job to tell people if they're breaking the law or not. You're not. We're not encouraging their use. Just record what you see and share it with us. What are you calling e-scooters? I mean, the stand-up scooter with a, yeah? Yeah. With the... <laughs> I, saw, I saw a guy on an electric unicycle the other day in yes. a backpack. That would those count are, the same. Yeah, those we would count in that same box. Those are also not allowed on Canal Corporation on stretch of trail. Okay, well, I'm not um, sure about that. But again, that's, that's we're not here to, to do any sort of law enforcement, you're not here to report to, to the police if you see that. We're just observing what is happening on the trail and reporting that data in the aggregate. So they all go in the electric scooter category. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, we might make that clearer so that anyone that wasn't able to attend today and they get this, they'll know exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll update that. And we do have an other box for random things that you see that you don't know how to otherwise categorize, put them, put them in that other box and then give us, there, there'll be a, a spot for you to write a note. We get some interesting stories from, from the kinds of things <laughs> that people have seen on the trail uh, in the past. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've finished your two hour block of counting, you're going to need to get the data to us. So next slide, please. There are, the best way to do this, I should say, is at, um, on our website at ptny.org slash count form. And that's accessible um, from the trail counts page on our website as well. And this will just take all the information you recorded by hand on that paper sheet and um, allow it to be digitized and put into our database. So you'll 
take everything directly and input it um, every time you do a count. So you'll fill out this form every time that you do that two hour block and every time you fill out the, um, the sheet. So if you're doing, if you personally are doing all of the counts at one location, you would do this four separate times. And we encourage you to do them as soon as you finish the count or as soon as you've finished doing all four counts of the location, uh, because if we know you did a count and you haven't submitted it, you'll, we'll start bugging you later in the year. Or, um, you know, it's, it's just better to help remember exactly what happened uh, mm -hmm. if you do it soon after. Mm -hmm. And then another option or the two other options are to scan it or take a picture and email it to trails at ptny.org or send it in the mail. But really the best way would be using the form. Um, and those are kind of the last resort. If it's not working, if you're not comfortable with it, then it's fine, but uh, please use the, the form when you can. And that <laughs> is all there is. <laughs> um, we know that it can be very specific, but it's for a reason. Um, and we're, we're grateful to have all of you committed volunteers um, on the call today. And I will just say when you do know where you plan on doing counts, please email us. Um, let us know that you're going to be doing that count so that we can coordinate if there are other people that say they want to do it at that location. Um, specifically for Rome, everyone on the call today, the steering committee, all of you that are here, you guys should coordinate and decide which uh, locations you're going to focus on so you can rally the volunteers around that. Um, but then for anyone else along the corridor, just drop us drop us an email so we we can make sure we know um that you're doing it any questions hey erica this is uh this is kevin for mm -hmm. stanwix um question for you on this so with our three locations in rome what is the desired frequency. So how many rotations would you like to see at each one of these locations? Is there a target? If we can knock out, you know, six, eight, 10, what's, what's the frequency of these eight hour counts? You only need to do one at each count site. So That's one right. as in a set of four, two hour counts totaling okay. eight hours, right? Okay, so you're just looking for one. So you're not looking for, you know, three, four, five different uh, different occasions throughout the summer at that same site. Okay. No. Mm. Like if, Dylan said earlier, it's great to have more data. If you have the volunteer capacity, that helps us. Dylan, yeah. did you want to add? That, I was going to say that. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no instance of getting too much, having too many counts or getting too much data. The more you can the more you guys have the capacity or interest in, in doing the counts, great. But in order to have usable data, um, that, that minimum of one count at each location provides us with enough to at least make a defensible claim. But like, it's, like I said, the more data that we gather, the stronger that we can say that what we're saying is the overall use uh, is supported by the data that, that's been collected. Uh, also, another question. Um, so we're going to be, let's say we're, we're counting at three locations. Yes. Um, do they have to be at the same time or can we count one location, then the other location, then the third location? Yeah, they don't have to be at the same times. Okay. Um, the counts will, uh, the, or the formulas that we use will account for that. We do want the counts at the same time when you're doing it, at, you know, as we talked about within each two hour stretch, because that helps adjust for if there were things like weird weather one day or some fluke of, you know, 30 people happen to come through on a bike ride. You know, there, there are weird things that happen on the trail sometimes, so. No, I, I'm uh, sorry, I misunderstood you. So you said they should be done at the same time. Oh, doing the same time. So in the set that yes. on Tuesday, if I'm gonna do Tuesday and Tuesday, it should be Tuesday five to seven, Tuesday five to seven. Yes, exactly. Okay, and, and let's say, um, I'm doing it at a different location also on a Tuesday. Does it also need to be five to seven? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. As, as long, so you just need the correspondence between the, 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 the two corresponding days at a particular location. Correct. Okay. Gotcha.
Okay. Yeah. How, uh, out of curiosity, in some of the other towns you've worked with and so on, uh, right now we have a steering committee in Rome. Um, and I know Brockville set up some kind of community uh, group or something. Did that end up being like a 501c3 type group or just a separate group that was part of something or part of PTNY or anything of that nature? So for instance, we got a group of counters now, it sounds like, and I'd recommend that we try to get together as a group of counters and just verify some of this stuff and pick dates and round up a couple more volunteers. But I, and this question's to uh, Eric and uh, Dylan. It, it, what happens in other organizations? So, so to speak? Um, in some ways, there isn't a long history of this. The, the Empire State Trail Pro Town program is relatively new. We did just start it last year. Uh, in Brockport, there was a pre existing organization, uh, Walk Bike Brockport, that was sort of took a, the lead on doing a lot of this coordination with PTNY. Um, they are not a 501c3, they are a committee of town government or a village government. Um, the way you decide to do it is up to you guys. I think coordinating it through your trail town committee that's being set up and formed already makes sense, having this be a component of the trail town committee. Um, but there's no one perfect formula that we can say, this is how it has to be because each community is different and it needs to be done in the way that works best for, for your community. Okay. Here's, here's one of the reasons, here's my underlying reason why I'm asking. We had, um, apparently the, the planning department in Rome had submitted for a grant to get say one of those uh, stands, uh, repair stands um, mm -hmm. and some other items, but they were it, it's either late or didn't make it and so on. And um, if, uh, there's several foundations in Rome that may be willing to chip in and purchase those items for us. It can foundations donate to the city or donate? Do they have to donate to? A, could they donate to PTNY and purchase the stand through you or, or, or? We're not in a position to do that directly through us. Yep. It depends from foundation to foundation. It's definitely something I think worth exploring and can be something that's, you know, this is probably part of the longer term discussion that we'll be having, you know, when we come out to Rome to do the placemaking workshop in a couple of weeks and, and okay. throughout the rest of this trail town process. But, you know, yeah. we'll, it, we'll have many more conversations yeah. about this, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. I can't make that evening meeting. I'll be there for the bike round though. So anyways, sure. okay. Great. I'm just okay. thinking out loud. No, that's, that's fair. Yeah. So if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap it up then. Thank you all uh, for joining. Really exciting to hear um, how invested you all are and really glad to have this effort being expanded to more locations along the trail. And 